Hello, I'm Miss Sutton. You might know me already, but uh, if you don't, I'm a teacher at Whiteley in year two. And one of the responsibilities I have in school is working with Mrs Gallagher to lead the maths teaching across the school in Whiteley. Um, maths is something I really love. So it's a part of my job that I really, really enjoy. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about some of the maths that we've been doing with the children in reception and year one and year two at Whiteley. Um, this year, we've been lucky enough to be selected to take part in a pilot uh, maths program Program run by the NCETM. They are the National Centre for Excellence of Teaching of Mathematics. Um, and they're running a scheme called Mastering Number, which is specifically for younger children in reception year one and year two. Um, and the idea is that it helps children to become more fluent um, and more flexible with number facts. Um, and it helps them to really understand numbers more deeply so that as they go on and they do maths later in life, they've got a really good grounding of basic number facts, uh, the language that they need um, and that they understand all the different things that you can do simply with single digit numbers, which can then be applied later on. Um, the, uh, one of the ideas around this programme is that we move away a little bit from counting and counting is a skill that is really, really important for children to learn, but um, some children that find maths difficult later in life, um, we find they come to rely on counting as a strategy way too much. I've got a little example for you. As an adult, if I asked you to work out this number sentence, so 22 add sorry, I'll read it again, 26 add 22 add 24, this way around, um, you've probably got quite a lot of strategies that would help you to add those numbers together quite quickly. Um, I would imagine you might have known already that the two stands for two tens, so you'd have a 20, you've got another 20 and another 20, and you might know already that three lots of 20 are 60, you do that quite quickly. Um, you might have picked out that the six and the four would make a 10, so you know you've got a group of 10 there, or you might have just uh, known that six and two is eight and then four more is 12, that would help you as well. What you probably didn't do, you probably didn't think, right, I've got 26. Now let me count on 22 more, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and then count on the 24 with your counting because it's not a particularly effective strategy. It's not gonna get you to the answer very quickly. And although younger children do need to count to start to work out some of their number facts, we also need to teach them other strategies that will help them with their maths later on in life so they can do things like that and spot number facts more quickly. So one of the things we are aiming to do with this maths programme is we're helping the children to move away from counting as a strategy and to start to use number facts and things that they know to help them to solve things more quickly. So um, one of the things that is really great about this programme is that it uses something that the ch most children know really, really well, uh, and that is the TV programme Number Blocks. So if you have been showing your children number blocks at home, either when they were a bit smaller or maybe now they're still interested, then you've already helped us out a little bit because number blocks are used in this programme to demonstrate some of the key maths concepts. It's a great show if you haven't ever shown it to your kids or if you've never watched it yourself, I do recommend you go and watch a little bit of number blocks because there are some lovely, lovely visual ways that the TV show uh, explains some of the maths concepts. And we use some of those in the programme, in the Mastering Number programme. So the children get to see those clips of number blocks every now and again. In reception, uh, the Mastering Number programme is being used um, as a pillar of their maths teaching at the moment. So they're combining some of the uh, resources that we've been given from the Mastering Number um, programme that the NCETM are running um, with some of the maths planning that they do as well to use that in their maths lessons. In year one and year two, it's slightly different. The children are still having the maths lessons um, as a whole every day um, already. And actually the maths mastering number, the resources we get from them are an extra thing. So it only lasts about 10, and 15, 10 or 15 minutes as an extra session four times a week. So they're getting that um, on top of the maths that they're doing already. 
We've already seen some really, really good progress with the children and the things that we've been doing. They're starting to remember the number facts that we want them to already. Um, but we thought, actually, if we share some of the information about what we're doing with you, that would help us even more. There are a few little things that you could be doing at home and language that you might be using that would really help us out. And also, it's really good for you to understand how the children are learning maths at school, too. So let me introduce a couple of long words to you <laughs> so that you understand some of the things we're doing. Um, the first one you might have heard of before is cardinality. Um, and that is just talking about um, the understanding of number. Uh, if I was talking about the cardinality of number three, um, we also sometimes use the term the threeness of three. It's not just understanding that you can count one, two, three rope counting, it's also understanding that if I show you this, if I show you this, that is three, that that makes three. And seeing that in lots of different ways, seeing that in all sorts of different picture forms, knowing that that is three, knowing that if you have two, that that's one less than three, and knowing that if you have four, that's one more than three, understanding um, the different patterns that number three might make, seeing it in lots and lots of different ways, thinking about if you had three groups, what that would look like. So it's really understanding um, what that actually means um, and what the number is made up of. Now, to do that, we use another long word term called subitizing. Subitizing is something that we've been doing in school for a long time, but the Mastering Number Programme really focuses in for all children, reception and year one and year two, we all do some subitizing at the start of this programme. It's about um, getting children to know what a number is. Uh, like I said, if I show you this, that means three. If I show you that, that means two. Um, subitizing is really, really easy to do. We do it lots and lots in school. Um, if I show you a picture, but not for long enough to count it like this, all you have to do is know that that's four. Without counting, your brain can recognize the fourness of number four, you know, straight away. And children really young can do this. In fact, uh, children that are three years old can do it for number one, number two, and number three. When they get to four years old, they can do four. As adults, um, we're pretty good at doing all the numbers up until about five or six. But if I show you, when I get to a number like this, that's actually very hard for our brains to see straight away when it's in such a random order. So one of the things that we do in the number programme is um, to help with the subitizing. We use something called conceptual subitizing, which is about showing the children the, the numbers in that form in different patterns that will help them to recognise how much there is. So if I showed you instead, a number set out like this, even though there's a lot of dots there, more than you'd normally be able to recognize, I bet that you could work out that there were eight dots. And that's because I purposefully grouped the dots into these little sets of four, and you already know that four and four make eight. So it was easier for your brain to compute. So one of the things we do with the children in reception and year one and year two is we practice this subitizing and you can do it in so many different ways, but the organization and the patterns that we show them are really, really key. Um, one of the patterns that is extremely useful that you, your children probably recognize already is um, the way that dots are set out on a dice. Um, and so using that pattern, you can actually recognize a lot of different numbers. For example, I'll show you this one. I set both of those two out in dice patterns. So you could see the six, you could see the three, and then your brain can compute that that all together would make nine. And that's the kind of thing that we start to show the children. And you can do it in a ways that they find exciting. So we've set it up so that uh, you might put the numbers in lots of different ways. And you say to children, well, what pattern can you see in those numbers? And they might start to talk about how they can see kind of a base of four and one at the top. They might say it looks a bit like a triangle or a pyramid or the Eiffel Tower, <laughs> whatever they can see starts to help their visual patterns of number. Now, um, one of the patterns that we use in mastering number, as I said, we use the dice 
life patterns which children already know to help with that conceptual subtitizing. But the mastering number resources also use something called a Hungarian dice frame. And in the Hungarian dice frame, they use the pattern of the dice for number five, and they use that twice. Um, working with numbers to 10, obviously in our decibel number system, is a really, really useful thing for children to be able to understand. So to have these two sets of five really, really helps. And so we show the children numbers in this pattern quite a lot. And the idea is that you would fill up the, fill up the five first, before you then start filling this one. So the children would know that that was number six or that that was number seven or number eight. So you kind of fill it in as you go. Um, so any games that you've got that involve dice are really, really helpful for the children because that will start to help their conceptual subitizing. Um, doing subitizing at home is incredibly easy. You can do it in all sorts of different ways. You don't have to write it down, which is good news. One of my favorite things to do maths with is always food. So I decided that I would cut up some carrots for this one. So you can see the carrots on the board. If you pick a certain number of the carrots, there we go, and you cover them up like this, um, you can show the children. Remember, you have to do that quickly because the idea with subitizing is that they do not count the items. You're not asking them to count to five. You're asking them to know that it's five. There they are, <laughs> quickly. If they find that tricky, you know, five is a difficult one, don't forget, organizing them in a pattern can really help with that. So you might organize it. Sorry, I'm slipping away. You might organize it so that you've got the dice pattern of five so that they can see that that will help them to know that there are five there. And if you want to go for higher numbers, if you want to start using more difficult numbers, then the patterns become really important because if I just put seven pieces of carrot onto my board, the children aren't going to know that there are seven there. It's too high for them to look at. But if I arrange my carrots, into <laughs> falling off again. I arrange my carrots into a four and into a three. Then you can see the four and the three, and hopefully the children are starting to know now that four and three make seven. So they've got more chance of knowing that they're there. But the key to these things, the key to the subtitling, is to do it quickly. So you're going to reveal the number, close it again. And they have to know that it's there. They're not allowed to count how many. But practicing that subitizing at home will really, really help improve the understanding of number of your children. So we talked about cardinality, subitizing, the Hungarian dice frame, the pattern that helps. Next thing I want to show you is a wreck and wreck. Um, your children might have come home already talking about wreck and wrecks because they've been using these in school. You might have wondered what on earth they're talking about. It's just a term for a particular type of abacus. So it seems a little bit like our maths is going backwards because it was a long time ago that children were using abacuses in school. But this abacus is designed particularly to help the children's understanding and mastering number. You can see. It's only got two rows, so 20 um, of the beads all together, and they are organized into sets of five. So on each of the lines, I've got five red beads and five white beads. All of this helps with visual pictures that the children are going to start bringing, um, start building in their head to understand and to become more fluent with those number facts. So um, we always start like this, the ready position for the wreck and wreck. And just like I said with the subitizing, on the wreck and wreck, we don't count. So we never move the beads separately to the other end. We use one push, sometimes we use two pushes, but it's all about moving numbers across. And so we do a lot of subitizing. So I might move one push, how many? And they have to say that there's three there without counting one, two, three. So we know that there's three. We can talk about how we know that there's three. They might just say, oh, I recognize there are three there. Or they might say things like, well, I know that the top row has five beads and there were two left over here and two less than five is three. So I knew that there had to be five at this end. They might even look at the whole row and say, well, I know if there's five and two here, that's a seven. And if I know there's 10 altogether, seven less than 10 is three. 
So we're already starting to use some of the things that we know about number to build up an understanding. Now, um, let's have a little look. We've done one push of three. What about if I did one push of five? This is a lovely one for children to start to see because we tell them straight away that there are five uh, red beads on each row, there's five white beads on each row, there's 10 altogether. So as soon as you do one push of five, the children can really clearly see, well, I know there are five beads in that top row. There's also five white beads. And if there's five white beads left behind, then um, five less than 10, we know is five. So that's really helpful in that visual representation. What about if I did one push of six? Well, this really helps because if the children know that there are five red beads, there's one more. And if they know that there's one more, they can work out one number. One number larger than five is six. So it's just one more. So one push of six, they can do really easily. One push of 10, also extremely easy because they know that all of that top row is 10. They know that five and five make 10. So they've done five and another five. Push that one over. We also start to use the, um, the two rows to make numbers up to look at how you can make numbers in different ways. So if I ask the children to do two, uh, a double six, so one push of six and another push of six, they've got a really strong visual image there because they already know that a five and a five makes 10. And then they've got two extras here. So they can straight away see that double six is going to make a 12. These visual representations are really, really key in them being able to recall those number facts quickly. It starts to make the facts come to mind more automatically. So they build up an automaticity to knowing those number facts and they can recall them much faster. Now, um, the other thing that the Reckon Wrecker is really useful for is um, in year two, we've looked at things like odd and even numbers and how if you have even numbers, there's always a pair so six is an even number because they're always in pairs, they're always in twos. Uh, if you had seven, you've got pairs, but then you've also got one that's left over, that odd one there, so it makes it an odd number. Um, and we investigated uh, things like if you wanted to make number six, could you make number six out of two even numbers? Could you make number six out of two odd numbers? Could you make number six out of an odd and an even number? And using these visual images where they can pair the beads up, where they can see how you might make six with two different ways, um, it starts to really get their brain thinking about some of those things. Um, and it helps um, them understand all of these mathematical concepts. The other thing that mastering number does really well is it introduces lots of vocabulary that the children find difficult. And some of that is done through STEM sentences. STEM sentences means uh, we teach the children a sentence of rote so that so we get them to memorize the sentence and to say it out loud we say it they copy we say it they copy someone else copies we repeat the sentence again and again so that it goes in their brain and again makes that sentence automatically come to mind when they're trying to work out their math facts so one of the ones we've used in year two before is when we're making numbers so let's say for example i've got seven and I can see that seven is made of five and two so I would say um two and seven make, sorry I'll start that one again two and five make seven uh, seven is made of five and two and so we'd repeat that sentence using lots of different numbers um, and that really helps the language to go into the children's brain so that they can remember it um, and words that they might not be as confident with. So um, in year two recently, um, a few years ago, we found out that the children weren't secure with the word fewer. They knew what less than was, they knew what smaller was, um, but fewer was obviously not a word that we've been using regularly when we've been teaching. And so that kind of vocabulary is used a lot when we're talking um, in the maths, in the mastering number math sessions. And so all of that vocabulary is um, used enough that it goes into the children's brains. They understand what it means. We use the visual images to go over and over so that they've got a really clear understanding of those. So um, I think that kind of goes through the basics of what we're doing with the Mastering Number Programme. If you wanted to do anything at home to help out with this, um, as I say, watching number blocks is fantastic. You'll see in there some of the little images and the things that we will be using to help the children to understand some of the concepts in maths. 
Um, practicing the subitizing, so showing the children numbers and getting to work out what number is there, just with those smaller numbers, and remember no counting, that's really useful. Um, and talking about maths in your day-to-day -day life is also really, really helpful. So rather than if you, you know, if you're talking about number four, don't just get them to count to four when you're counting things, you know, when they're playing with their toys, when they're doing things, um, ask them questions about it. Can you think of a shape that has four sides? Could you put these things into four groups? What number comes before four? What number comes after four? Um, what does number four look like on a dice? What pattern does it make? Uh, can you show me four fingers? Can you show me four fingers on one hand? Can you show me four fingers on two hands? Can you do it a different way? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> um, so not just uh, looking at the surface of the number, but actually asking questions that delve just that little bit deeper to help to understand, to help um, to broaden that understanding the children have of the number facts. Um, if there's anything else you would like to know about the resources we're using for Mastering Number, um, then you can ask your child's teacher. So all the classes in reception year one and year two are using the Mastering Number programme. So your children's teacher will know all about it. Um, or if you would like to contact me directly to find out more about it, you can use the year two email address, which is just year two at whitelyapps.com. Um, and you can ask me any questions you've got, or if you want to talk through anything further, then I'd be happy to do that. Um, it seems to be making a really big impact on the children and how they understand these number facts and the, um, the fluency with which they're able to recall the number facts and use them. Um, and the mental images they've got with the wreck and wreck and the Hungarian dice pattern, they're able to use those to see the patterns really quickly and to call the number facts to mind. So I'm hoping that all this work we're doing is really having a positive influence on your child and the way they're learning maths. Um, and we'll be continuing it throughout the year if you have any opinions on it, then I'd be happy to hear those as well. Um, that's all for now, but uh, hopefully I'll hear from some of you soon and we can talk about some more maths. Take care. Bye-bye.